right? Instantly, I'm thinking they're going for the invades. They're looking to slow down this jungle. Five well, I guess we'll find out if that is truly down. going to be the case Smash because we them. now enter the Land of Dawn for the first time on day Welcome two of MSC Legend. 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, Smart Omega are going to be playing on the blue side and on the opposite end, we got ID and S. Will they be able to show us another upset here on the MSC stage? Interesting. This is a, okay, this is a ruby jungle. Right? Oh. We, I don't know about you guys, but I don't see this often. Yeah, I don't see this often too. I would have expected Ruby maybe probably to kind of take her time here, probably play a support position, but instantly the invades start walking through and Lois has to survive. Oh, but he is actually able to take the orange buff. Not sure if it's going to be worth it though. First blood gonna go over to Ryzen on the side of Smart Omega. There you go. That's already starting that early game power spike I was talking about. That's, I mean, in terms of that, you don't want to obviously give that to the Fanny. And now, you know, this could set them up for dominating the early game. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So let's talk about the early game one more time, except this time, let's keep in mind that Cheku is going to be playing oh, this Grok uh, in the support position, not the Masha this time, right? So now we're expecting a more defensive playstyle. So I think IDNS made a really smart decision by taking this orange buff because they can start playing even more defensively and oh. trying to protect Angelina here. Is it going to be enough? No, they find the kill. Yeah, that's going to be another one going the side of Smart Omega. And in the meantime, we can already see that Ryzen giving them a bit of their own medicine now going for Loise's orange buff instead, not gonna let the earlier game steal get to them. I'll tell you guys this, right? When Chak knew the Chak Mamba is playing Grok, he is not, uh, maybe, maybe uh, like, let's say one out of 10 times, he plays very defensively, but the guy will make plays out like that you're not even expecting. He'll use, you know, every tool in the kit that he has, plus the flicker to make plays, either save teammates, they've seen it time after time, so, Right now, paired with what they have, it could be bad. Ooh, that's a wild charge. Gonna be able to find up Zanri. He's trying to get away. Looks like he will be able to escape wow. thanks to Lois. Zan Zanzak now coming in to provide some backup, but Lois dropping real low. Ryzen still on top of the turtle. Renzio dropping low, but it's the Ruby that's gonna be taken out right away. Chaknu managing to escape from their clutches as well as Ryzen secures the turtle. Mm, I, I personally think that's a little bit of a misplay coming in from Lois. He could have easily walked towards the gate side to protect himself. And since Angeline was trying his best and he was blocked off, all he had to do, all he had to do was drop his abilities, pray that Lois was able to communicate properly and move towards that gate to keep Omega in check. But unfortunately, the kill still goes over to Omega. And now this entire early game as we transition into mid is looking in Omega's favor. This is again the, the question mark that I have here, right? The ruby in the jungle. It's something... Like I said, we haven't seen much of, and I don't know how well it's gonna work. I mean, yes, you have later, throughout the entire game, you have the CC potential, but you also lose the flicker, right? Like this is this is what you pick Ruby for usually, flicker, I'm offended combos. It's just pretty much the same thing as having like the flicker on the Grok, right? So you lose that. I feel like that's losing a lot of what this hero has. I do agree with you there, but personally, I have a little bit of bias here because I actually do quite enjoy playing Ruby in the jungle myself. It is a hero that's surprisingly deceptive to be utilized in that form here, but you can definitely see that when going up against a hero like the Fanny, Ryzen right now has way more mobility, way more control of the map in comparison. Oh. See this play here down on bot side. Zanri is getting on top of Kelvin real quick, but E2 Max ready to get as Nakam comes on through. Instantly, Zanri is taken out. The cartwheel held to the last second to ensure his death. That was so clean. I mean, E2 Max just literally walked over there, threw that knockup down, and it was a clean kill just like that for Smart Omega. So they're already 3k gold lead here. IDNS has to be thinking of a way to just slow this down, like you guys mentioned, right? Because Yes, Sudafa, they have a ton of mobility on that Fanny, but rest of the team too is also just rotating very well right now. Yeah, in comparison, IDNS definitely having a little bit of difficulty maintaining control over their side of the map. E2 Max definitely made a big difference in that fight. And also, I do think this is probably the first time we have seen Julian in the mid lane in MSC so far. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. Julian in the mid lane, especially when you're up against Xavier. Xavier doesn't naturally have a lot of pushing power until he gets his first two items, but now the engagement begins. Yep, that's a wild charge onto oh. Lois to ensure the retribution, and Ryzen follows it up in hands chain to keep Zanri Knocked off a free kill again, going over to Omega now six and zero. You see what I mean? 
Jack New will just make those plays time after time. And so IDNS needs a way to counter that from happening and not putting yourself in that position to get wild charged because that stun is too long and now they're gonna make a play at the bottom. I see a lot of trouble. The Ooh. flicker forward into Wesker. You cannot count out the Beatrix. E2 Max has to back it off. Yeah, he kind of felt that. He's like, never mind. He's like, call it off. Uh, we'll come back later. Yeah, you don't get, you don't really see too many players actually go for a play like that, especially expanding such an important battle spell that can be used defensively for a Beatrix who doesn't have that much m mobility. So flickering in front of his face, that, that again, <laughs> what an ego challenge. <laughs> it is interesting, especially considering when we look at other players as well, Wesker is becoming more and more popular on the Beatrix and flickering forward to get that big burst damage isn't actually unusual nowadays, but Lois could be oh. out of position, gets caught with the watch charge into the wall, oh, sets up ooh. for Kelra. Zanri now coming from the back line. They will be able to find Chaknu, but they find another IZ. Gonna go down. Zanri in a bit of trouble, but no CC. He will be able to run away. Yo, Chaknu, this man's game sense is so good. He's keeping an eye on that Beatrix. As soon as Wesker is whipped out, he immediately takes the shots for Kelra, allowing him to just blow through the rest of the team. Hey man, that's the Chak Mamba for you, right? Like I said, he is a very aggressive just player in general. So that's why when he picks these heroes, you know, the Kufras, the Groks, like this is when he gets to shine the most. And now, oh, big <laughs> damn. That's rough, but a nice time offended. Two man dawning light, not enough damage though. Angelina now out of mana. Izzy getting Ooh. some good snipes, but E2 Max, he knows what's coming. Juking him out, going to be able to escape in the top lane as well. There was an attempt onto Sun, but he was able to escape from the Grok and the carry. Good movement coming in from E2 Max for now, but topside, I think, you know, Thamus isn't having much of a fun time, not that they've rotated after breaking tier one and even threatening Turtle. Horizon gets hooked, but still able to secure the Turtle with Retribution. Izzy now out of position, mega kill going over to Ryzen. Lois now getting caught out by E2 Max with the uh -oh. two man in hand. Jade, dawning light, not going to matter at all as Lois is now the target carry, even managing to pick off the tower in the mid lane. Killing spree going over to E2 Max. This is tough. We're talking about a thousand gold per minute here, boys. I mean, it's seven minutes in, 7k gold lead for Smart Omega here. And just look at everybody. I mean, they're all, I don't, they gotta have what, two, three items all by now. And it's just a play after play. This is literally the best we've seen Julian played in the mid lane. He's just lit finding the CC, the knockouts where he needs to, and then it's all good. Yeah, uh, well, currently they're at one and a half items once they hit the 28k mark. I think they'll have about two items at that stage, but uh, I, it's tough because right now the only member who's doing decently well is going to be the Stamos on bot side and Omega. Switching things up one more time instead of trying to push up on that top side. They want to play for this next Lord objective and are willing to give up that tier one on top side because they generally they don't want to deal with Sun. They want to keep on pressing their advantage in this 4v4. Yeah, I am really loving the rotations of Smart Omega now and we can see Ryzen oh, instantly oh, oh. going in. He has his eyes on the Xavier and will be able to claim his prize. Oh, now Kelly are going in the mass damage secures the enemy gold laner Ryzen even taking the tower aggro for a short while while charge unfortunately going to miss on Zanri but that is two kills for nothing we have to take a look at the items here because there, there is no way I mean just look at the damage being pumped pumped out here I mean even Kelra right you saw just it was like one two and the, uh, the health bar was deleted here on the side of IDNS so we're talking about 10k gold lead at this point, right? The next big objective is going to be that first Lord. And honestly, IDNS is going to have a hard time even if they want to try to contest that. Yeah, I mean, a 10k gold lead in most situations is checkmate. And this early in the game, nine minutes as the Lord is spawning. Omega are in prime position for the checkmate two as tier two now getting threatened. Jack Moon trying to go for the wild charge, but gets stopped by the I'm Offended. E2 Max onto Sun in the side. The Dawning Light literally doing no damage at this point as Jack Moon finds the oh. wild charge onto the hill. That's Zanri gonna go down to Keldra. Unstoppable streak. Renzio taking most of the heat as Sun wants to find something, but ID and S are just too far behind. So that's the thing. Like, there's actually some damage potential here. Now we can actually take a look at the items, Gideon. Mm -hmm. Yep, three items already on Kelra, and he's been going for the full crit build this time. Wind Talker into Scarlet Phantom, into Berserker's Fury. He has more than enough damage, and as long as his team outscales him, we're just buying raw armor, honestly, at this stage of the game. I don't think Angelina will be able to catch up in time for a Luminous Lord push.
Something else I kind of want to highlight too is the fact that E2 Max is actually playing a completely different Julian build from mm -hmm. all we've seen so far. He went the Calamity Reaper, Concentrated Energy, and then the Brute Force Breastplate. This is more of a brawler type Julian build. I yeah. think this is what makes him so valuable, mm -hmm. right? You know, the flexibility, not only in the lanes, but also the way that you can build uh, Julian as a hero himself. This is what makes it so strong because, I mean, we've seen it now time after time, right? So far in these last two days where you can throw him in the jungle, build him the way you want to as an assassin or as a bruiser now, right, in the mid lane. And also with taking Mystery Shop where you can get those items a little bit faster, paired with the type of pace you set here for this game and the gold lead, Man, you're going to do so much for your team here. I mean, let's not forget that if Chandu is looking for the engager, somebody's got to peel. And E2 Max, he can do both. Oh, that's a lot of damage from the enhanced side. Lois and Izzy being poked out quite heavily. But Nibiru's passion should be able to clear up the Lord. Omega, though, not sure if they're happy with that. Do they want to look for more? Well, right now, they're going to continue the siege on the base here of IDNS. Can they actually still defend this one? They should be able to clear it. They have, I mean, they have great clearing potential. Like. They can buy time, but how much time do you need to buy here? Well, I think we're looking that IDNS is ideally wanting to get Angelina to about three items. I think he just recently purchased his second. He needs to get his third. He's fixed his mana issue. He will be able to spam ability. He has more than enough cooldowns. And a high ground defense of five minutes is going to... It's going to be a little difficult with a 14k gold lead that Omega has. They're eventually going to be able to muscle their way in. And knowing how Chiaknu plays, if he can get three knocked up <laughs> with that wild charge, I think that'll be game over. I feel like at this point of the game, though, you don't even even need the three man knock up anymore. Omega being 14k gold ahead of IDNS just means that as long as they're not directly feeding themselves to the enemy, they should have a pretty clear path to victory. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think if they wanted to brute force their way into the base, they don't even need to wait for the Lord. Now, I beg to defer. I, this is Omega. They aren't playing like RSGP HD. <laughs> they're not boring. They want to be interesting. <laughs> and I know Chuck New, for a fact, is going to be looking for a cool play. He wants the what we like to call the TikTok. Highlights. Oh, that's yeah. what he that's wants. That's fair. <laughs> so, yeah, I could see. I've seen it happen before, right? He is. If there's any moment, even if it's just one person, but it's better if it's three, right? Um, he will find that moment, and this is exactly what IDNS, IDNS needs to do, right? Pair up a little bit because you can't actually go anywhere alone because of you're so far behind here. But as the game goes on, you might be able to catch up on some of the itemization where you can start to see some form of maybe split pushing going on. But right now, they're pretty much stuck together here or in their base. The Luminous Lord has now officially spawned once again, and Smart Omega will indeed be going for it. We can see that Chaknu and Renzio are being left to defend the lanes, make sure they are pushed out so that IDNS remains in their base. Lord gonna go over to Omega, an interesting purchase as well, Bloodlust Axe on Kelra. Yeah, Kelra just needs to live. I think he's one of the more important members here because at this stage of the game, we're seeing that Ryzen, yes, he's almost about max items. He has more than enough damage, but even if he dies, he still has to fall back onto Kelra. And I don't think Ryzen by himself, even with a purple buff, can 1v5. Kelra can definitely do that. You know, I, I just think this march in is obvious. This, this will actually crack open the base of IDNS, right? So this is the time for them to show what they're made of here in terms of having the defense. They have great clear, but can they actually stop this game from ending? I guess we'll see Chaknu coming in, looking for the play with the Conceal Lord already breaking down mid in hip, top in hip, falling to E2 Max as well. Smart Omega want to break this right open, but the Lord is cleared out. Renzio doing a lot of damage to Angelina in the back line. E2 Max gonna miss the chain, not quite enough to finish off Izzy. And oh. Chaknu finds the two man, wild charge, monster kill. Going over is. to Kelra, they find one, they find two. IDNS is breaking apart, and the crystal is going to fall in favor of Smart Omega. Well, there it is. That was the moment he was waiting for, and it was actually just inevitable. It was about time. The 